Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, January 5th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Job's friends came and sat with him in silence for about a week, but now they are going to start talking. And unfortunately, what they have to say is not going to be particularly helpful for Job. In the first of these, this series of speeches, Job's friend Eliphaz the Temanite is going to talk to Job about why he thinks Job is suffering. And he makes it clear that he believes that Job is suffering because he must have done something to deserve this suffering. According to Eliphaz, Innocent people don't suffer. People who haven't done anything wrong don't suffer as much as Job has been. Now, there is a kernel of truth in what Eliphaz says. No one on their own is going to be righteous before God because all people are sinful. But Eliphaz completely misunderstands uh, how suffering works in the life of a believer. Um, Job is not suffering because he did something wrong. Job does not need to repent of anything in order to cause the suffering to stop. Eliphaz is not really bringing Job any sort of comfort here. Instead, he's blaming Job for the suffering that he is experiencing. And of course, that is not at all helpful to Job, who really is in need of comfort and encouragement right now, not blame for the suffering that he's experiencing. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, Should anyone try to speak with you when you are exhausted? Yet who can keep from speaking? Indeed, you have instructed many and have strengthened weak hands. Your words have steadied the one who was stumbling and braced the knees that were buckling. But now that this has happened to you, you have become exhausted. It strikes you, and you are dismayed. Isn't your piety your confidence? and the integrity of your life, your hope? Consider, who has perished when he was innocent? Where have the honest been destroyed? In my experience, those who plow injustice and those who sow trouble reap the same. They perish at a single blast from God and come to an end by the breath of his nostrils. The lion may roar and the fierce lion growl, but the teeth of young lions are broken. The strong lion dies if it catches no prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. A word was brought to me in secret. My ears caught a whisper of it. Among unsettling thoughts from visions in the night, when the deep sleep comes over men, fear and trembling came over me and made all my bones shake. I felt a draft on my face, and the hair on my body stood up. A figure stood there, but I could not recognize its appearance. A form loomed before my eyes. I heard a whispering voice. Can a mortal be righteous before God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? If God puts no trust in his servants and he charges his angels with foolishness, how much more those who dwell in clay houses, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like a moth. They are smashed to pieces from dawn to dusk. They perish forever while no one notices. Are their tent cords not pulled up? They die without wisdom. In contrast to Eliphaz's understanding of suffering in the life of a believer, Paul gives us a much better perspective on the role of suffering in the life of a believer. Today, he assures us that even though we as sinful people continue to struggle with our sinful nature for as long as we remain on this earth, there is no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus. No, we have been set free from condemnation because Christ Jesus endured that condemnation for us. Now, we are still going to experience suffering in this world. Now, that suffering is going to come to us because we live in a sinful, a sin-cursed world. Even the world itself is groaning for the time when it will be released from the curse of sin. But God does indeed work even our sufferings for our good. 
And he assures us that nothing, not even the most intense suffering, not even the most drastic disaster, no matter what, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering, in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on the things of the spirit. Now, the mindset of the, of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. Not only that, but we ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Now in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he sees? Now, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He is also at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. 
who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.